Stevenson's Link Valve Timing on Small Steam Engines Part 2. Adjusting the settings of the valve gear to optimum. I am showing this on two large model steam engines because it is much easier to see the process on a large single cylinder engine without the space constraints of a small locomotive. Right at the end of this video is an interesting comparison between a steam locomotive and a stationary steam engine. Before you even attempt to set the valve timing on a steam engine or steam locomotive, one thing you have to check first is the crankshaft. Is the crankshaft a good fit in the main bearings, and is the big end a good fit on the crank pin? And if the answer to either of these questions is no, you will need to fix this problem first. I'm currently working on my Stuart 5A. It's very good for demonstrating principles because everything's so big. What I'm doing here is replacing one of the grub screws because if you look carefully at the left hand one, it's cracked. I'm looking at this because the Allen key that I've always used for this job started to spin round in the grub screw. So I could never adjust it properly. And that's what you get for being obsessive when it comes to valve timing. Now, as you can see, the new grub screw fits the Allen key perfectly. And the old grub screw is so damaged it takes the next size of Allen key up. In order to get to this grub screw, I had to remove the eccentric strap. If you look at the other eccentric strap that's still there, you will see a hole drilled in the bottom of it. The hole isn't big enough to allow me to withdraw the damaged grub screw. It's really just to let an Allen key in to tighten the grub screw against the crankshaft. Because I didn't machine a recess into the body of the eccentric strap, I'm having to use a spanner to tighten these bolts to hold the bottom part of the eccentric strap to the top, and this is a very long-winded and laborious job. The next time I make some eccentrics, I'm going to machine a recess to allow the use of a socket on this part. Eventually, though, with my small spanner, I managed to tighten both of the bolts. The question is now, though, where do you start? My way of doing it is to set the largest lobe of the eccentric to exactly 90 degrees to the crank pin. I don't need to use any sort of jig for this. My calibrated eye from years of experience allows me to more or less see 90 degrees. A while ago, I rebuilt a Stuart Twin Victoria and I set the two crank webs on the crankshaft to 90 degrees by using my calibrated eye. I'm telling you that because quite a few viewers wrote in and asked me how I managed to get the cranks at 90 degrees. After setting the position of the highest lobe of the eccentric sheave at a perfect 90 degrees to the crank pin, I turned on the compressed air supply and the engine began to run. However, this timing is not quite correct, so I moved the position of the eccentric and retarded the timing slightly. There was an immediate and considerable improvement in the way the engine ran. Here's a bit of slow motion. It is not always possible to make steam engines run silently, and some full-size steam engines are far from quiet, particularly if parts of them are worn. I'm going to refer back to a video I made a while back. It's a horizontal steam engine, and I was setting the timing. And this clearly shows how it's done. Here I'm setting the valve position. The slide valve has to pass over the ports equally at both ends. The timing of the valve is down to the eccentric setting. What I need to aim for with this engine, as with all steam engines, is early admission. I need the valve to just crack, as you can see here, letting steam or compressed air into the cylinder, just before the piston reaches top dead centre at each end of the cylinder. This early admission effectively cushions the piston and stops all the mechanical parts from overstressing at the end of their limits. If the valve is in the correct position over the ports, all you need to do is set the position of the eccentric relative to the crank pin. And I mean just before top dead centre, not like this, more like this. This would be about fine for the valve just to uncover the steam port to let the steam into the cylinder. 
it would be effectively cushioning the piston at each end of the stroke. And because the valve is equidistant, when you turn the crankshaft over, you will also see that the valve uncovers the other port when the piston is at the other end of the cylinder. So now with the valve set and the steam chest cover back on, I'll give it a run. This is very much the first run. Things are a little bit tight, but it's running very well. This flywheel, although it's not very well machined, is really heavy. And that's very good because the kinetic energy is there to pull the parts over top dead center. One of the main problems with slide valves, they're quite efficient, as far as steam engine valves go, and they tend to wear in, not wear out, because they're always pressed against the port face by the pressure of the steam, but they don't have to take a lot of moving. The pressure of the air or steam holding the valve against the port means that it requires quite a lot of force to move the valve. There are many other valve gear designs for steam engines. Locomotives generally use piston valves, although some of the earlier locomotives use slide valves. The slide valve is good for model use though because it's a fit and forget thing. You seldom give any trouble, provided of course they're lubricated, but that goes without saying. What you've been watching is the way to set a slide valve on a single cylinder engine. One's a vertical one, this one, the Stuart 5A, the one you've just seen was a horizontal engine. What I have to say direct from the teachings of LBSC and model engineer is you need to know which way you're setting the valve timing and you must not rotate the flywheel or locomotive wheels backwards. Backlash gets in the way of the observation of where the slide valve is. I don't think LBSC actually used those words, but the point is you must know which way you're actually setting the valves. You need to make sure that you set the eccentrics each to the opposite side of the crank pin, not both at the same side. This is a steam locomotive and it sits in this position as it runs down the track. But if you tip it up so that the smoke box door faces upwards, which is definitely not advisable if you're running it on steam, but to illustrate the point, this side of the locomotive that you can see is very much like one side of a Stuart 5A. The eccentrics are in between the two wheels. When I rotate the video so that the motion of the locomotive is vertical, and add a Stuart 5A in another clip at the side of it, you can see the similarity. Just imagine the Stuart 5A is the other side of the axle. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.